with that. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I wasn't saying that I had misled. No. And so I, I just want to remind him that, you know, he has to address questions and comments to the chair and just be mindful of the words that are being used as well. Um, so the uh, resuming debate, the honourable member for Thornhill. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I'm honoured to have the opportunity to rise in this place on behalf of the good people of Thornhill on issues within Bill C-11, the Online Streaming Act, the new name. As many will remember, in this previous Parliament, my colleagues who were in this place spoke to the issues in a different bill that was C-10, an act to amend the Broadcasting Act. And while this new bill has a new title, the very same issues exist in this bill as they did in the last. Almost the same bill, different name, same problems. Those problems, which were an admission of the former Heritage Minister, where he said it was flawed. So a flawed bill that nevertheless passed this House only for Canadians to be spared its overreach by an election the Liberals deem the most important in history that, of course, brought us to almost the same result with the same bill by a different name. So this bill is a near copy of the government's deeply flawed Bill C-10 that fails to address the serious concerns raised by experts and Canadians from coast to coast to coast. And while you'll hear from a member's opposite claim that there is now an exemption for user-generated content, one of the major concerns the, admi the, the minister admitted was deeply flawed, the new bill does the same thing as the old bill and allows the CRTC actually to regulate any content that generates revenue directly or indirectly. That means virtually all content would still be regulated, including independent content creators earning a living from platforms like YouTube, like Spotify, or even a favourite of some members in this new government arrangement, TikTok. Madam Speaker, let me be absolutely clear. Conservatives support creating a level playing field between large foreign streaming services and Canadian broadcasters while protecting individual rights and freedoms, those individual rights and freedoms of all Canadians. That's fundamental. And we also know that Canada is home to many world-class writers and actors and composers, musicians, artists and creators. Creators need rules which don't hold back their ability to be Canadian and global successes. And with this all being true, there are those who are rightfully warning that digital creators, those we celebrate as Canadian stars, could lose foreign revenue if the government forces digital platforms to promote Canadian content. And that means cutting into revenue that Canadian content creators earn, the exact opposite of what we should be doing. Online, the Online Streaming Act will skew the algorithm uh, our online platforms use to match them with the viewers' personal preferences. So that's force-feeding Canadian content, which the government chooses rather than what might match the viewers' preferences, is no doubt a problem. Because when you force people to watch something that they may not want to watch in an effort to promote it, you might be doing the exact opposite. It would suggest that if you force content on viewers, then a conclusion could very well be that the forced content isn't actually popular, leading, of course, to potentially less promotion abroad of what was irreparably deemed unpopular by the government, by the CRTC. This is actually disadvantaging our talent, arguably one of our greatest exports. And yes, as many in this House know, videos that few people watch are actually harder to find. They don't pop up. They aren't promoted. So if you don't select the Canadian content the government decides they want you to watch, or that they've offered you, they, you they, they click on something else leading to perhaps the dreaded thumbs down rating, which of course knows no boundaries and would be deemed less popular here and abroad. And again, the government will say they aren't doing that, but it won't regulate the YouTubers, the TikTokers that post their content. But that's not what the bill says. Madam Speaker, the bill gives the authority to the CRTC to regulate any content. And even if you, were, if you were to take this at face value and believe it, why wouldn't you make that scope in the bill more clear? Why wouldn't you make it more prescriptive? Madam Speaker, if it walks like a duck and it talks like a duck, it's probably a duck. And hiding behind the complexity of legislation, as the Minister has, should be of concern to every single Canadian generating content that this bill would regulate and every single Canadian that watches it. Madam Speaker, it should be of great concern that the CRTC is being tasked with administering the Act, a body already stretched to its limits in this country. And a fair question to anyone supporting this bill would simply be that if the CRTC lacks the capacity 
to carry out its current mandate effectively, how can it be expected to take on the internet, the entire infinite internet? So knowing all that, the CRTC would be handed the power to develop the rules and regulation, and it can make those up as it goes along. Because guess what? The bill doesn't stipulate it. Madam Speaker, this act would bestow onto the CRTC the ability to determine its own jurisdiction without constraints, despite, against having no, despite again having no capacity to even do it. But let's put that very serious issue aside for a moment and pretend that the government bill doesn't do what the government bill says that it's going to do. Madame la Présidente, lorsque le gouvernement s'implique... When the government gets involved in areas where it shouldn't, then we're confronted with a troubling reality, which has become a common refrain of the opposition. If this bill is passed, Canada will become the very first democratic country to enforce its online streaming act. Canada will also be the first country to regulate content published online. We will be in good company with the dictators like, uh, in countries like Iran and North Korea to protect uh, citizens' freedom because, Madam Speaker, the government is not comfortable with a vast open space of communication that exists outside of its control. Over the tens of thousands of digital first creators who have found a way to earn a living and export their talent globally. We should be celebrating these accomplishments. We should be encouraging their spirit of entrepreneurship. We absolutely should not be punishing them with the demands of this legislation under the guise of creating a, quote, a level playing field, as the government says, that, quote, web giants will pay their fair share. What you actually get is like the disappointment that you get in a cereal box. You get an internet czar. And which, of course, it sounds alarming because it is alarming. It's important to remind members of this House that the Broadcasting Act wasn't meant to regulate the Internet. And it, many will say that this modernization of an act that was put in place for radio and TV will somehow boost the Canadian arts and culture sector. To that, I say I have a bridge to sell you. It's not going to happen. That's not how it works. Because more regulation has never and will never incentivize more artistic creation. It's not how it works, let alone more wealth and success uh, to creators. Because one thing is for certain, when the, government, uh, when the government instructed bureaucrats pick winners and losers, there are no winners. Not in this realm or in any other in the history of government. The government picking winners based on how Canadian content is viewed or which they decide what you will watch is, is an imposition on your freedom to choose what you actually want to watch. It also doesn't lead to more Canadian content. Mr. Speaker, Bill C-11 is a solution looking for a problem that doesn't exist. And I hope that members of this House will carefully review every aspect of this bill, because like a, a member before me said, it's going to have grave, uh, grave consequences for generations to, to come. There is a lack of clarity in this bill of what this bill is going to do. And instead of promoting our Canadian creators, it actually punishes them. I hope that members of this House will think of their rights and their freedoms on the Internet before they agree, they agree with this government's illogical pursuit to control what you see online. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Questions and comments? The Honourable Member for Fleetwood Park Kells. Well, thank you, Madam Speaker. In listening to the debate today, I, I do so as somebody who uh, went through the first Canadian content regulations. I was on the air, and if I play Anne-Marie Snowbird one more time, I think my head will explode. But that was the point. What we did on the radio, or what we do on standard television, is present a very linear stream of programming. So you get this one, then this one, then this one. And the only choice you have is to watch or turn to another channel. But online, and this is where I, I want the member to, to, to kind of reflect. Online, if I go onto Netflix, there's an endless number of tiles that I can select from. And some of them sh should be Canadian, because I'm a Canadian. 
and I deserve to at least have the opportunity to know that my stories are being told. Because to create content and not let people know it's there is like winking at somebody in the dark. So, can we not just say that there's a real benefit to my honorable colleague to at least letting people know that this material exists while they have an infinite... Honorable member for Thornhill, I do have to allow for other questions there. Thank you, Thanks. Madam Speaker, and thank you for the question. And the member opposite would know that if he looked at all of the tiles on Netflix, he would see Canadian content. And Canadian content is important. And the problem is, is that the bill doesn't even stipulate what Canadian content is. So how do you regulate something? How does the member opposite regulate something if he can't define it? Okay.